I'm going to start wiring this tractor up. And this video is going to be kind of a composite you know, to show each step of the progression of wiring. So as you see right now, it's still pretty tore down. However, once I get further on, you know, with the lights, the fenders and everything, you know, the tractor's going to change. But at this point right here is where we're going to start. And the first two pieces I'm going to go ahead and put on are going to be the voltage regulator and then our main wiring harness. Now for a parts breakdown, as far as the regulator, I like these Napa Echelon ones. These are still made in the USA, as far as I know. I just bought this one in 22, or not 22. I bought this one back in 2020 or 2021. I can't remember, remember when. Both my 861 and my 8N both have these regulators. The 861 has this one. The VR953, which is the 12 volts for the diesels. And the 8N is the 6 volt one. I'm not sure of the number. I'll try to look that up and let you know what that is if you're interested. And I'll also try to find the 6 volt for the 100 series. For the wiring harness, I prefer the Dennis Carpenter wires. I think they're very high quality and look nice. Now for the diesels, and I believe it's the diesel that still runs the generator, the wiring harness you're going to want is a 311043. And they do have a nice wiring diagram that comes with it or you can also use the original out of the service main well, let's go ahead and get this voltage regulator installed first now on this regulator when you purchase them from Napa this cover is actually blue it's almost Ford blue the originals were black so I just painted mine gloss black As far as your hardware up here where it mounts is concerned, if your originals are in bad condition, you can actually purchase the air funnel screw kit for an 8N tractor and it'll come with new clips and new bolts. It should be four of them. Well, let's go ahead and set the regulator up here. Now, I'm not going to tighten down this lower screw because there is a ground terminal that goes here. So I just got it in there right now to help align everything. But I will go ahead and tighten down the other two. Now, on the main wiring harness, they're pretty simple. There's not, you know, there's just not much to these, especially on the diesel models. You got three wires down here at the front. This is for your generator. Your next up is going to be the starter relay. These next two or the voltage regulator. This is going to go to your terminal block and your charge light on the dash. 
and this is going to be your start button. Now, the start button does not have the boot on it. So be sure you purchase that separate. And that little terminal boot is going to be an 8N-11113. So I'm going to start up here on the voltage regulator. This little wire right here, along, well here, let me just do it this way. These two ring terminals right here are gonna go onto your voltage block. One of them is constant 12, one of them is a switch 12. Or six if you're running six volt system. This terminal block is also for an 8N. And I'll have to look at the part number and give you that because I don't have that currently. On your voltage regulator, your red wire is going to go to your armature terminal. You slide that in, drop your screwdriver. and then tighten it down. The white wire is going to go to your field terminal. And then lastly, the yellow wire is going to your battery terminal. And if your regulator has these U-shaped sleeves on your bolt, go underneath them. Okay. Then you can take the ring terminal, and it doesn't really matter which side you put these on, just keep in mind that your yellow is going to be your constant 12 from your battery. So anything that's constant 12 needs to go with the yellow wire. Anything that's going to be a switch 12 is going to go to the red wire. So for right now, I'm just going to just loosely put that on there because other stuff's going to go on here. One of which I know right off the bat is our ignition switch. The other ones are probably going to be some headlight wires. So our next ring terminal I'm going to go ahead and do is going to be the ground right here. This is going to go into the bolt and then onto the regulator and into the clip. this ring terminal on our switched side. Okay, so that brings that wire up here to our dash. Then our starter wire is going to turn. I'm going to bring it down here through this eyelet. This eyelet is also going to have the wire for 
our rear tail light. Whenever you install this boot, which I know I've kind of got this way off to the side, when you install the boot, the open end is going to face towards the terminal. If you kind of pinch it just a little bit to make the hole oblong, the terminal will slide in. And then just feed the wire up through the boot. Let me bring this camera in a little closer here. You see more of what I'm doing. Get these battery bolts here out of the way a second. And then we're just going to lift up on, well, well, we might be able to lift it up. Let's lift up the screw on our starter switch. Slide our terminal underneath it. And we'll screw it down. Then take our boot, slide it up, and it'll snap over the ridge on the starter switch. And like I say, this will just go up in here. But once I get the rear tail light harness in here, I will take and kind of close that clip down a little bit to help hold it. So here's a little closer look at the wiring up here thus far. Like I say, it's pretty simple stuff on these diesel tractors. You basically have a starter circuit and a charging circuit. I don't have the battery tray in here just yet because I want to show you a better video of this. So we're going to ignore the starter relay wires for a minute. But your harness is going to kind of tuck in right behind where the battery box would bolt. And then it's just going to kind of lay down across the transmission. And right here behind your starter is a clip in the block. Just take your harness and snap it down in there. Now for some reason this particular block only has one clip. This is the same engine block that's in my 861, and it has another clip right here above the oil filter. This block is not drilled and tapped for that. I don't know why. But if you have that clip, you can go ahead and snap your wire in there as well. I don't, so mine's just going to kind of hang down in there. So up next is going to be our generator wiring. On our generator, we have a rear terminal. We have a field terminal here on the side that is insulated. And then we have a ground terminal that's kind of here towards the back, almost pointing straight towards the ground. That is our ground. So ground points to ground, easy way to remember. Big red wire, this is your charge back wire. It's gonna go on the back of the generator. Whenever you tighten these down, they have to just be snug. You don't have to honk them down or anything because these are really small. You don't want to break them. Okay, so the ground is the black wire. It's going to go onto the ground terminal. And then the white wire is the filled terminal, and it'll go on the filled terminal. And 
And I just kind of tuck these wires back in here a little bit, just try to keep them out of harm's way. Okay, so aside from the starter relay, that's it for the main harness. It's, it's simple. It's like I say, it's a diesel. There's no ignition circuits or anything of that nature. If you have a gas model tractor, your wiring harness is going to continue around to the front of the engine to link up to your distributor and your coil. My next step now is going to be putting the dash throttle and the battery tray in here. So once I get that done, this video will pick back up. All right, so on our ignition switch, which I guess we can call it that on the diesel tractor. We have two wires, one red, one yellow. Up here on top, where our main harness is, yellow to yellow, red to red. And this is why I left this loose, because like I said, there's, there's even gonna be a couple more wires that come up here. Now, me personally, I kind of like to have the switch just on the bottom. That's just my personal preference. It doesn't really matter where you stack it on there, just as long as it's on there. We're going to slide the switch through the hole. And go ahead and get our nut over our wires. And then our ignition switch will slide in. Then we'll take our wires, which unfortunately they don't really loop up here in any good fashion. Like I said, yellow is constant battery voltage. Red is switch 12. Okay, so there's the ignition switch installed. I have the original starter relay, which I think this is actually the uh, glow plug relay. I, had, I end up having two of these original looking ones. It's gonna mount right there with a little external tooth lock washer and a nut. Okay, now, as far as wiring this relay, as you can see, we have two red wires and one yellow. Well, yellow is battery. It's going to go over here and hook up on our side that hooks to our battery cable. On the two red wires, the short wire is going to go to the S terminal. which for whatever reason is the outside terminal on this relay. If you are wiring this yourself, this S is gonna be the one that comes down here to your push button, this wire that's running right through there. Your I is gonna be ignition. That's gonna come up here to your terminal block where you have switch 12 volt. So these are just going to slide onto there, like so. Like I said, I don't understand why you'd make the short one the one that goes out to the side, but for some reason that's the way this harness is. All right, let me go grab the battery cables and get them put on. So on the battery cables, they're pretty simple. I've got a cable here that I made. This is some one gauge cable. Yeah. Pretty heavy duty for a 12 volt system, but 
they work. This has got two eyelets on either end, both 5 sixteenths. I'm going to hook it onto the outside of the starter relay. Tuck it up underneath the battery tray. And that's because we're going to have our air cleaner coming through there. And then we're going to come down here and hook it onto the starter terminal. So now I can get in here with our air cleaner and it's good and clear. Then on the inboard side of the relay, we're going to have our positive battery cable with a 5 16 eyelet on one end, positive terminal on the other. And then we're going to take this big yellow wire and attach it to the same stud. That way we get constant 12 volts. Like I said, up here on the terminal block with the ignition switch, yeah, I have certain wires I like to stack first. The battery cable is the one I like to stack first, like put it up tight against the starter relay and then put the yellow wire on the outside. It really doesn't matter, it's just a personal preference of my own. So now, I'm going to go over to the other side and we'll put the negative cable on. Which I guess I kind of neglected to mention that on these 12 volts this is a negative ground system, not a positive ground like the 6 volt. Okay, so this side, negative cable in, and on this one is a 7 16 eyelet. Now this eyelet, I think I had to drill it out, I cannot remember. But it might end up actually being like a half inch eyelet, I'm not sure. But that's going to go right here. And go right there on that battery mount bolt. Okay, and there's that good and snook. Now, as you can see, these cables are now long enough to where I could run the big old original style battery. However, it probably won't be. It'll probably be a smaller one. And these cables are actually a little on the long side, but it's kind of hard to put wire back once you cut it. All right, so I went and got a bulb that goes into the charge light. This is just a 53 bulb. My local Napa had this. It literally broke the bank at 80 cents. Even with our crazy inflation. But I got a new bulb. And that's just going to snap into the light. The well, plug relay goes right here. Now, as you can see, there's no way for me to put it in in that direction because it hits the cage nut. So it goes like this. I'm just going to take a bolt, go from the outside, external tooth lock washer, and a nut. And these are a quarter 28 by a half inch long bolts. It doesn't really matter which terminal you put this on, because it's just a solenoid creates an electric field. So you're going to take one of your leads and ground it out through the mounting bolt. Then your other lead is going to connect to the glow plug switch, which I do not have in here yet. But anyway, you're going to just ground the solenoid straight to the case. So the next parts I'm going to put in is going to be our glow plug switch and our headlight switch. Now 
And I know that technically these are manifold heaters and they're not glow plugs. However, I'm probably going to refer to them as glow plugs just because that's what everything else refers to them as. So, just be aware that's what I'm going to call them as glow plugs. So, I've got the switches rebuilt and I'll have a little video of me rebuilding those. The glow plug switch is going to fit right here next to the solenoid into your little or into the hole next to it. And pretty much if you spin that nut in you can then put on the outside nut tighten it until it's good and snug on the switch so once you get that outside one good and snug you can come in here and tighten down the little pile nut until it's good and tight so once the switch is installed we're going to go ahead and install our glow plug wire harness the harness from carpenter comes in three different pieces there's this one here that is a glow plug heater switch harness number 312-129 that is your harness that's up here on the switch itself then they have another harness, which I do not have it out at the moment. It's called the relay harness. Well, it's going to work your relay, your big wires from your blocks, down to the rear heater or glow plug, whatever. And then the last kit is actually just the wire that goes from glow plug to glow plug. So be sure you get all three of them. And I'll be sure to talk about those other two kits whenever I go to put those on. So the first wire we've installed right here, whenever we actually put the relay on. Which leaves another black wire and a red wire. The other black wire with a 90 degree boot is going to go on one side of your switch to the relay. Since this is just a switch, you know, it doesn't matter which terminal you put it on. I like to put mine right here on the one that's closest to the relay. Just put that in there and tighten it down. Take your other 90, slide it onto the relay. The red wire, just like all of our wires up here already. Remember, yellow is constant 12, red is switch 12. We want to put this red with our other reds on our switch 12. We're going to hook it up to the other side of the switch. And then we'll come back over here. On our terminal block. on our switch 12 volt side and then we'll go ahead and put it on there so there is the glow plug switch side complete on the relay alright so now that our glow plugs are now restored it's time to get them put back into the manifold. I don't have any anti-seize or anything on them. You can add that if you want. But they're basically just gonna thread in.
Of course, mine have got paint on stuff all over the threads. So they're a little on the tight side. I did find some anti seize down here in the chicken house, so I'm gonna add some to that, to these glow plugs. Yeah, these things act just pretty much like a spark plug, just tighten them up till the crush washer seats. And also, just like a spark plug, these things ground through the manifold, so we just have power wires. As I had mentioned on the relay, there's three wiring kits that you need. The next kit that you're gonna need is your actual power wires that come to and from the relay down here to the first glow plug. And that's a 312-128. Next one you're gonna need is it's just a single wire that goes from the glow plug to the glow plug. It's a 312-132. So let's start with this kit first. We have two wires in this kit. There's a long wire and a short wire. The short wire has the same eyelets on both ends. The longer wire has a big eyelet and a small eyelet. Your big eyelet is gonna go up here on the solenoid. Small eyelet down there on the glow plug. But the first wire, the short one, we're going to hook up to one side of the relay. It does not matter which side. I'm going to hook it to the rear. And that's just kind of keep it out of the way a little bit better. I'm just going to slide it on there and just kind of put the nut back on for a second. The second end is going to come down here to our starter relay. And it's going to go on the same side as the battery cable. That way it has constant 12 volts. Okay, so down here on our starter relay, we have the battery cable here that is running to the starter motor. This is actually the positive battery cable that runs back to the battery. The black wire is the one going up to our glow plug relay. The yellow wire is our constant 12 volt or battery 12 volt that is going to run up here to our voltage regulator here, which is also connected up here to the terminal block. So that wire now looping up to the rear of this relay. The other wire is going to loop back down the side of the starter relay and underneath our battery tray over to our first glow plug. Here's our glow plug supply wire and it kind of needs to tuck back as far into the head as we can and that's going to be to clear the air intake and that's going to hook on to the first glow plug so that's kind of those two cables installed and I say kind of because this one is not tight yet for the simple fact that we have to put the glow plug to glow plug wire on. This is this little short one. We'll go ahead and slide that onto that eyelet. Or, well, I guess that's the stud going onto the eyelet. Loop it up into our wire holder and then come down over to the front glow plug.
fold that in just to hold that. And I just kind of bent those backwards towards the intake. So now those can be tightened up. All right, so now we're gonna install the light switch. This switch is gonna go into the side. And we have a flat cut here on the switch. So that's gonna line up with the cut and the steering column cover. You're gonna have your lock washer and then your nut. So only light harness or wiring. First thing you gotta have is you gotta have the main light harness. This is basically the harness that's gonna hook everything up to the tractor itself, as in the switch to your power source. Well, then from this harness here, you're gonna have your tail lights or light. And I say lights because I'm pretty sure that this one also has your, uh, your implement light. If you have the little plug on the rear of your tractor, I'm pretty sure that's on this harness as well. And then your actual two headlights will attach to this harness. So this harness here from Dennis Carpenter is a 310-993. This harness should be the same whether your tractor is a 6-volt or a 12-volt. So this harness here is pretty simple. The two greens or the green and the green and the black are going to connect to your switch. Green is headlight, black is tail light. Yellow, battery 12 volt. And this one here has this asphalt loom on this rear tail light wire. This little pin right here, this is what's going to connect to the implement light on the rear if you have it. This tractor does not, my 861 does. I have nothing that hooks up to it, but I do like to cover this. So they make a butt connector that looks similar to this one that you can just slide over top of it and seal this up. And then this female connector here will connect to the tail light. So I'm going to take this tail light wire. I'm going to go ahead and feed this down behind the steering column because there is that little wire holder that's over here on the left hand side and I'll show you that here in a second. It will feed all that over there, including the battery. I believe there's enough room for me to roll that up and around. The headlight wire is actually gonna run along the bottom of the hood right around in this area. So I'm gonna kinda of aim this in that general direction. So I'm gonna put that one, this terminal here, on the front switch terminal. And then the other one will obviously go on to the rear terminal of the light switch. This plug right here, there should be a fuse in there. Looks like a 20 amp fuse.
like I say, this will just kind of run out along that way. So that's kind of it on this side. So let's spin the camera around over to the other side and we'll get everything hooked up. Okay, so back over here, reach in here and grab this battery cable. When I say battery, it's actually just a constant 12. And we'll hook that up here with our other yellow wires. Right here is this clip that our tail light wire will slide into. And as you see, I also have the starter wire in there. Now I just take and kind of close that clip down a little bit to help keep that nice and secure. So now we're going to run this wire down along the side of the transmission cover through this hole in between our two castings. We're going to come up to this clip and then we'll come down and into this clip. And it's kind of difficult to feed this through there because of this female connector right here. This loom and this connector are too big to go through there together. So you have to kind of flip this around and kind of pinch that wire down to get all this to go through. So the female connector will go first, followed by the male connector and the folded over wire. And so now you can just start feeding the loom through. And it'll run like that. Now on my H61, I think I have these clips here and here. I'll have to double check. You can add as many of these clips as you want. I don't think there's any real specification for them. We'll hook that one into there. Go ahead and crimp that one over. Hook that back there to where. So now you got this plug kind of right here where the implement light receptacle would be. And then this wire is going to come down into this right this clip here. Now the way I have it on the H61, I actually have the connector itself in that clip and that's just to help secure everything so for right now I'm just gonna leave mine hanging until I get the rear fender the light and all that put on here like I said I'll probably add some clips here because this is kind of dangles and gets caught in my feet and it's just these clips is there and there I'm pretty sure I got that on the A61 but at the moment, that's it for the wiring harness on the lights. Because once I get the hood put on and the fenders, I'll show you that part. Okay, so I want to make a quick correction here. According to the Dennis Carpenter wiring, the male plug goes to the implement light and the female plug will go to your tail light. That is not correct. And that is simply because this male plug is not long enough to go all the way to the rear where the implement plug would be. However, this one is. And the implement plug has a male terminal anyway. So, you're going to have the male one here and I'm pretty sure you have to use a butt connector to hook to the light. But those are available from Carpenter as well. All right, so now we're on to the last bit of wiring with the exception of the lights. And that's gonna be hooking up the fuel gauge. Now this is the original fuel gauge that I restored. You can see a video of it. 
and I did restore the original sending unit however I did not film that just for the simple fact I honestly did not think I was going to be able to restore it because it was broken and I was able to get it to read pretty much from an eighth of a tank to a full tank and you know since this is a diesel you don't want to run it out of fuel so if I'm getting down to an eighth of a tank I'm stopping and I'm putting fuel in it so I'm okay with that so the last harness is the fuel gauge harness and there's not a whole lot to this harness we got a switch 12 volt each one of these is going to go to our gauge it doesn't matter where on the gauge this goes and then this is going to go out to the sending unit so what I'm going to do first is go ahead and just get the switch 12 volt put in And if yours is still a 6 volt system like a gas model, this will actually wire it in the same way. So go ahead and put that in there. Go ahead and get the washers back on and the nut. So now at this point, everything is on this terminal block, whether it's going to be 12 volt or switch 12. Because the headlights are already attached, they have their own separate plug-ins. So we're done on the terminal block. So like I say, up here on the gauge, it doesn't matter which one plugs in where. Our two studs that are insulated is where we're going to plug in our switch. Or not our switch, but that's where we're going to put our wires, rather. Make sure they go on there as far as you can get them. And then, like I say, the last one's going to be out here to the tank. So on the tank, we have just one stud. This sending unit should be grounded through my tank. And I do need to get a voltmeter and just, you know, ohm it out and be sure it is. That wire is just going to slide down on that stud. And now, one more piece. We have this clip. This clip slides on the seam of our fuel tank right there. And our wire you lift up that center section the wire will fit through it right there and just be held into place so there's the fuel gauge installed and like I said that's it for the wiring other than the headlights and the tail light and I'm gonna go ahead and put this video out with that this much of the wiring complete and I will talk about the other wiring on the lights when I get around to finishing the body and paintwork on the sheet metal and just here's a little bit better view of that clip <laughs> 